Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Welcome to episode 39 of Talk Smart with... Pew. And McCart, that is young Joe Pew over there, and I'm Andrew McCart. A um, little bit of a funny one today, I'm in my car, Joe, as everybody can see. Uh, been a hectic day, but that doesn't stop us. No matter what, yeah. rain, sun, sleet or snow, we'll do this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a it's been a hectic week, I think, or overall uh, for me. Um, I, 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 I didn't I didn't think it was going to be as busy. I'll be honest. It all led to an absolutely fantastic night at O2 last night. Well, you're you're breaking up a wee bit there, Joe, but that, that's fine. We'll, we'll work with it. But yeah, you you the the show last night. I just let's just jump straight in at the deep end, man. Um, let's just go straight to Fabio Wardley and. Razor Clark. Now, yeah. probably one of the best British heavyweight title fights I've seen, if not the best. What an absolute battle of attrition that was. Fantastic fight. Um, before I say my piece, Joe, man, just fire away, man. How how good was that fight? Oh, it was so good. It was so, so good. Uh, it lived up to all of the expectations and Genuinely, before the fight, I, I couldn't call it. I think in the build-up, kind of a fourth fight week, I was edging towards Fabio, and then during fight week, I was edging towards Fraser, and then obviously we had that twelve rounds of just pure war, and then after it's so rare after a fight where no one can really decide who's won. No one really knows how to score it because it was so hard to score just because it was back and forth action throughout. Obviously you had to knock down them the point deducted, but it just had a bit of everything. It had all the drama. It, it was blood, guts and glory and it certainly was bloody because, yeah, Fraser, uh, Fabio's face was, was certainly a sight. I tell you what, boxing is a sport that you can't hide. You can't hide in boxing. Do you know what I mean? If you if you try and hide or cut corners, you get found out. Um, last night was just absolutely like I said to you, both men put it all on the line. You can just after when that twelve bell went, Fraser Clark went back to his corner and sat on the rope. Fabio Wardley went back to his corner and put slumped a little bit and got his nose wiped. That is when you know both men have just emptied the tank. They have fought on complete. I would think that maybe Fabio fought six or seven rounds just on sheer heart alone. Do you know what I mean? He must have had difficulty yeah. difficulty breathing out of that nose. Um, and obviously Fraser Clark is probably kicking himself this morning with that silly point reduction. And I, I don't think it... Listen, I know he, he got worn, but it was minuscule. It wasn't like he, he went Wah! trying to dig that way. It was just a little boop. Do you know what I mean? Like he'll be kicking himself this morning because if he never had that point reduction, he's probably the British and Commonwealth champion right now. Um, but that being said, I think that fight didn't deserve a loser. So I'm quite happy that they'll probably get the rematch because I would see that again tomorrow. I would watch that again. That was an absolutely fantastic yeah. advert for boxing. I, I don't know uh, a boxing fan that won't watch that again tomorrow. Mm. I, I don't. I, I don't know if it will happen uh, next. I'll be completely honest. But uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was brilliant. And the funny thing was, I think it was round four when. I think Fraser hurt Fabio and uh, I went, you watch Fabio is going to turn into an absolute beast now. Like he's done in so many of them fights uh, before and he did. And then I think the next round he got the knockdown. So it was just one of them fights where he's back and forth throughout. And I did think Budo's first three, four rounds, I thought that certainly Fraser, because Fraser hadn't shown it yet. Mm. I didn't think he'd be able to keep the pace that he did. Mm. And don't get me wrong, the fight went with ebbs and flows, but they all, but they always seem to f find that pace once again at some point within a round or within the next round, mm -hmm. which was excellent. So they, ne they, they never died away. And if they did look like they was fading, they'd always get it back within the next 90 second period of the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the first time both men had done 12 rounds as well. And you can tell that yeah. now they know that how difficult and how fit you need to be to... To do twelve rounds, as especially nineteen stone, seventeen and a half stone men, do you know what I mean? It might be a little bit easier for the lighter guys. Do you know what I mean? They're not carrying that much muscle around, 
But for, for big heavy men like that to do 12 rounds the way they did when it was just constant, constant, none of them took a round off. I mean, Fabio, I mean, like I said to you, he fought the, fought the, the second half of that fight on just heart alone. There was moments in that fight when Fraser clocked him in the second half, that is, and you're almost thinking that he's gone. But then he would just get that second win and come back with a flurry of his own and uh, put Fraser on the back foot. And it was like you're saying, ebbing and flowing. And like I said as well, that it's, it, boxing is a test of character and how much you are willing to go to the well to win that British title. And how many times have I said it? I'm going to say it again, Joe, that when a British title is on the line, what do we get? A great fights. Absolutely a, great fights. Fucking good fight. And it's just been... I, I, I'm not saying it happens all the time. Obviously, you're going to get the damp squid every now and again, but it was an absolutely fantastic advert for boxing last night. And, like, a lot of people had it a draw. So maybe that... I, I was going flicking through Instagram and, and Twitter and a lot of the people, boxing heads were saying, I had a draw, this, that, and the next thing. So maybe that was a fair result last night. Um, but when you looked at the... What, what, what int- interested me was when that final scorecard was read, you look at the... Fabio, and then you look at Fraser. Fabio put both arms in the air, and Fraser went like that. Oh, shook his head. So it was almost like maybe a relief for Fabio and disappointment for for Fraser. That's how the the motions I got when that final scorecard was read. But um, do you think that was a fair result? Do you think a draw was was fair, or do you think do you think maybe one of them should have nicked it? Yeah, I think either way, like. It could, it could, it was so close, and I want to watch it again, and I will watch it again, and sit down and score it. But you are right in what you said, and Fabio, logically, with it being such a close fight, getting the obviously the point deducted, Fraser getting the point deducted, and then the knockdown would favour it to Fabio. But then, when you look at it, and certainly from where I was sitting, it looks like Fraser was getting the better of a few more of the rounds, and mm-hmm. Fraser, when I spoke to him after, was so kind of just frustrated with himself with the silly point deduction. Mm. And he said, like, the point deduction is the point deduction, but the second in lap to concentration, where if he'd have moved back half an inch, it wouldn't have got him so caught off balance and he might have gone onto the rope rather than actually gone down mm. in that it, when he did go down. So that's why he was more kicking himself about. And I think he was kind of kicking himself because I think in his mind last night, I don't think he would think, thought he was getting a rematch. Um, because Fabio's got so many options. Um, it was no secret. I think it was going to be Fabio's last fight at this level if he did win that fight. So it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Fabio's going to need a lot of time out because that nose seems to be a reoccurring thing now. So that needs surgery, and that needs to make sure that that because that can't happen every fight. No, that that that, that just can't happen. Um, so Fabio's going to need a lot of time out. Fraser will probably want to get out again. Um, so it might not happen next, but I think it was a fight where it was so good that I'm praying the public demand will be enough to make it. Yeah, yeah, probably it's Ipswich football ground. I don't know what that ground's called, as I'm a Scottish bo- uh, Scottish football fan. So Portland Road, mate. Portland Portland Road. Road. I knew you would know. That's why I put that in there, because I knew you would know. In the summer, maybe? Maybe. But I don't think he's going to be ready in time. This is what we were saying last night. I think so. If if you're going to have a football stadium, it's going to be like May or June. And when what we're in now, we're in the first of April today. So is Fab going to be ready? I doubt it. So maybe they set up for a big fight next year at the at the stadium because that fight could arguably be too big for the O2 now. The O2 was, I think, it ended up having about thirteen, fourteen thousand in there last night. It holds eighteen. So and that would that would definitely sell more than it did last night. Just through the photos alone, you just can see that ring, that bludgeoned ring, and it tells it all. And yeah, great fight. And just I hope we do see it again in some shape or form in the near future. You are thinking that uh, Fabio will vacate then and then move on to sort of like the next level? Do you think he's done with this British level? And that will obviously free maybe free up Fraser Clark to fight for the vacant to uh, Solomon Dakers or somebody of the likes. Is that a sort of more all depends. scenario? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it all depends. I think if Fraser wants to... Obviously, it means like every fighter wants to win the British, but if Fraser gets a knock a knock on the door maybe from Saudi to go, because he's proved himself last night that he can mix at that level and probably 
although that was a British title fight, it was a British title fight that was a level higher than British level mm. um, last night. So if, if Fraser gets a call from probably maybe Saudi Arabia for a massive kind of international fight, he might look to go down that route. Mm. So both of them guys' the stocks have risen so much and the, the options will be endless for the both of them now. Yeah, the, and it was a lot made pre-fight of, obviously, the, the white-collar background, five white-collar fights from Fabio Wardley and the extensive amateur career from um, Fraser Clark. Was it a Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Olympic bronze medalist? Um, but I was thinking as well, like, imagine Fabio Wardley, white-collar. Imagine some some guy, some lawyer somewhere, some doctor, what do a white-collar charity fight and got p- paired up with Fabio Wardley back in the day. I know. Paired geezers probably still eating his dinner through a straw man uh, but yeah <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be fair to be fair Fabio man when you do have that extensive amateur background and it showed it showed in times with, with Fraser Clark in that fight that when he used his jab he, he was he was effective he was bat, he was the battle of the jabs was won by Fraser and then it was a simple right hand as well from Fraser so the the, the Boxing fundamentals and the technique was all Fraser and, and you can see it and he was wearing them down. And but Fabio, like I said to you, man, that guy's got heart heart for days, man. He was just I can't I, I thought he would have gone in the tenth round, then the eleventh round, then the twelfth round, but he stayed there and he kept on swinging and he would have these little busts where he would just let unleash going. It was like I said to you, it was a fantastic advert for not just British boxing, but world boxing. And uh mm. yeah, for a Sunday night card I, I enjoyed it man because then on before that we had uh, Florian Marco against uh, Chris Congo um another another good fight very very good fight probably not as as much drama as we thought it would have um but I think Congo boxed to instruction he he was just he was just doing everything right he stayed poised he stayed relaxed um didn't let Florian get his work off and on the ropes, so yeah, it was all in all, it was an absolutely fantastic night. But yeah, the co-main event for you, uh, Congo Boxwell, Florian, yeah, yeah, like, you... career best performance from Congo. I think I didn't actually watch all of it because I was in and out, you know how it is. Um, but I, I think Congo Congo boxed really well. That's the kind of performance Congo needed, I think, um, because mm. he he was kind of. Under a bit of pressure after the Essamon fight, it was a close fight. The Essamon fight, um, well, which he kind of come up, come off loser to. So it, it it was big for him for Chris. And just after Florian was absolutely distraught, was he? like her, like really really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because I, I don't think he's lost in competitive competitive competition, has he? Uh, mm. Like in, in years. I think even in his kickboxing background, I don't think he's lost in years. So um, hopefully he'll come back because Florian's a character that we need. Then obviously you have Ben Whitaker, mm. Leon Williams. I, I, Leon Williams brought it, and you can't ask for nothing more than what Leon Williams done. I think. No, I, I thought defensively Leon Williams was was his defensive skills were. On, I, I'd, I'd never known Leon Willing, uh, Williams up until last night. Like I seen glimpses of him on. Uh, when he won the area title, when he knocked that guy out, when he was slipping on the back foot and he rolled and came back with the left hook, which was obviously put on Instagram to say that he can showboat as well as Ben Whitaker. But he tagged with Ben last night. He tagged him with some big shots, which was, one, good to see Ben getting hit, and two, Ben can get hit and take it because he hit him yep. flush. Leon hit him flush. Um but I like that from Ben. I, I like, listen, I'm a massive fan of Ben Whitaker. I really, really am. Um, and I like his antics in the ring. But what I liked from Ben last night was the fact that he was jabbing to the chest and he was he was showing you more of the, the boxer that he is, that he can be, that he can bite down on the gum shield and go toe-to-toe with you if you, if you want. He's not stunned, not all on this flashiness and dancing. He can have a fight if he wants to have a fight. And he showed glimpses of that last night. And I think as he steps up the level... We'll see more of him getting into a fight, and we'll see more of that. And even when he got tagged, he was showboating a little bit. So he's never not going to sh- stop showboating and doing what he does. And that's why I like him, and that's why a lot of people like him. He's, a lot of people don't like him, but listen, he's got people talking. He went viral, and people are tuning in to see him. But I thought last night was a perfect test for him against a very, very good 
young fighter. He's only twenty three year old, Liam Willings. His stock has went up, and uh, mm. yeah, he, he's gonna he's gonna be if he gets the right fights and manages well. He doesn't just doesn't jump straight into like a a Dan Aziz fight, Willings or a Boatsy fight. He doesn't just jump straight into one of them top guys. But if he builds, he'll come in right behind him. I think he's good enough to come in right behind him. He's only twenty three. Do you know what I mean? Come in right behind them and fill that void when they guys in their thirties vacate, retire, or do whatever they're at world level. He can he can win a British title, I think. But like I said to you there, I actually I liked what I saw from Ben Whitaker last night. I like the fact that he can he can have a fight as well as uh showboat and do what he does. Yeah. Uh, again, I think Ben Whitaker, you take what you like you take what you want from it, but just had the whole crowd because it was a packed crowd in there last night they didn't just come for the main event fair play to them it was packed from early on um, and he had he had them in the palm of his hands he, mm. he, had, he had all of them just watching him just laughing cheering it, it was it was great to see and it, it's a rare thing to see as well so uh, I see Dan Aziz was on commentary mm. uh, I'm not kind of too sure what comments he was making. Obviously, I weren't listening. But I think that fight's probably inevit- inevitable, probably. Not next fight, the fight after, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think one more fight to get to Dan Aziz. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think Dan Aziz will have another fight. I saw that uh, uh, Lyndon Arthur had said something about having a fight with Dan Aziz. So that might be in the pipeline beforehand, before he faces uh, Ben Whitaker. But like, I think Ben's ready for these guys maybe in a next fight, maybe a, another fight like a area guy or or an, an, maybe an international guy who's who's on who's been that sort of gatekeeper. Maybe I don't know a European level guy. I'm I'm not sure, but then he'll be ready for these Dan Azizes and Boatsies and yards. I think he has got the yeah. skill set. When you've got an amateur background like the Fraser Clarks, the Ben Whitakers, the Galalia Fies, who's fighting in Las Vegas this weekend. You can be pushed a little bit quicker. There's no point holding you back. Do you know what I mean? You went from fighting elite level amateurs week in, week out, tournaments all over the world, and then you drop down and fight very, very low level journeymen. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. When you're when you're on that sort of pedestal that they are with the elite amateurs, you can get pushed a little bit quicker. And I think Ben uh, Ben Whitaker, another fight, and then you can. Why not? Why not put him in there with a Danny a Danny Z's, a Lyndon Arthur? Um, a yard or whatever. He might not have the professional fights. He might not have that credentials yet. But look at the professional fights Wardley had, 17-18. Look at Fraser Clark, 6 or 7, whatever it was. Do you know what I mean? But the amateur the amateur background for Fraser paid dividend in that fight as well. Do you know what I mean? So I think that, mm. yeah, I'll probably tell end of the year, Whitaker, Aziz, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I, I love that fight, and I think that fight would have a great build-up as well. Mm. Kind of like Wardley Clark, um, mm. just because, like, I know, that, I'm not saying Dan has got the same background as Fabio Wardley, but Dan Aziz had to come up and do it the hard way. He weren't expected to kind of get to the level he did headlining against Joshua Boatsy and doing really well in that fight like he did mm. um, uh, six weeks back. So, so, like, yeah, I love that fight. I really do love that fight. And, uh, just quickly going over the rest of the card, uh, Callum Simpson, uh, Great, really, really impressed with Callum. Love Callum Simpson. And brought a lot of travelling fans as well. Listen, he deserves a fight in Barnsley. I mean, his fans have had to travel Manchester, London, here, there and everywhere. Yeah. And, and he's put in the road work as well, uh, Callum Simpson. He's been invited over to Canada to spar Better BF, so he must be doing something right if somebody like Better BF has asked him over not once but twice, maybe even three times, I'm not sure. Yeah. Love Callum Simpson. Love the way he fights. Um, I think he's got a very, very good fight ahead of him. Hopefully it's next against Zach Chilly. Well, it's meant it is next, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. I think Callum Simpson's one of, one of ours. He could be... He could be... Now I'm gonna put my, my neck on the line here. He, he 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 can win a world title. I'm gonna put my neck on the line there. Listen, I might wow. be wrong, but I think he's that good. That's I think big. That's big. Yeah, it's big. But I just think that he's still developing, man. And every time he he's, he's got a good short selection. He's big for the weight. He's like six foot two, six foot three, super middleweight. So he's he's got good size. He's got good length. He can hit. He's got good short selection. He's young. He's got traveling support that are gonna 
give him that extra two, three, four, five percent in that ring, wherever he is in in the UK or the world. And I think if he if he doesn't win a world title, he'll fight for one. And I know how easy it is to fight for a world title nowadays, but I I, I really really like Callum Simpson. Yeah, as do I. And somewhat something I really liked about him is like. He gets it. He gets like the fact that he's got to promote himself and put himself out there. Mm. Like he after he was roaming the corridors at the O2 at one o'clock in the morning after the main event. What looked like blogging, or so or something to do with that. So I'm sure we'll see content out there. So so he gets it, and he, he like that that behind the scenes footage is good. And mm. we see fighters kind of get out of the ring and straight to have a massage, go to the bar, whatever you want to do, which obviously do what you got to do. But this guy's kind of investing in his own profile, which which I was kind of respected. And I'm sure we'll see whatever that content is very, very soon. The return of Alan Babich. Alan, ba- Alan Babich, uh, yep. Um, fun. Listen, fun. What you, uh, listen uh, I, I hate this saying, what you see is what you get, but what it is what you see what is what you get with Alan Babich. Do you know what I mean? He, he, I think he threw two jabs. No, I mean I, he he doesn't have a jab, which I like, right? If you're just gonna get, <laughs> if you're just gonna put your chin on your chest, look at the floor, and just swing big haymakers at these guys that are four, five, six inches taller than you, and you rock them, you hurt them, then listen, he is he it is what it is. No, I mean he, he ain't gonna do nothing different. He's gonna give you entertainment. Um, yeah, listen, he said in his own words, Alan Babich was. He, his last coach there tried to make him be a boxer, try and throw a one-two and a jab. Alan Babbage doesn't have a jab. Let's be honest, and that's that's no. okay. That's okay. That's not the way he fights. He ain't going to be the back foot on his toes, throwing jabs left hook to the bodies and rolling his head and slip dipping and rolling. That's not going to be Alan Babbage. Alan Babbage is going to sit on your chest and throw big right hooks over the top, big left hooks over the top, big left hooks to the body, right hooks to the body, and that is it. And I'm I'm glad to see him back because, like after the way he was, like his, his past few fights against uh, in the UK, then he went to Poland, Lukas Radanski, and then got ironed out in a round. And um, you can almost write people off and think, "I listen, he's he's never going to do this, he's never going to do that." But um, it's hard for a fighter. You know what I mean? You understand the mental games. You just see that the end product fans. We do. We just see the end product them in the ring fight, and we don't see the the training camps. The the mental side of things, do you know what I mean? The family lives and everything else that goes in between for that fighter to get in that ring. So we don't know what Alan Babbage is going through with all the negativity on YouTube and whatnot and Twitter for that last fight. But listen, he went in there, got the job done, and that's all you can ask for him. Yeah, definitely. And another character, another fun guy. I think Tommy Welch was there. So uh, that would be an interesting fight. I'd like to see that fight. And yeah, it was just it was just a good card all around. It just had a very good feel, good atmosphere in there last night. You've missed um, the fight, Joe. You've missed the fight. Packed out O two. You've missed uh, the fight. I, I've got there. I've got it. I've got it. It is Mikhail <laughs> Lowell versus Vidal thought, Riley. I, thought, it's, I was going to call you up on that. I thought, yeah. missed, I thought you'd missed it there, Joe. I was almost going to call you out on that one, but you, don't, don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Don't worry. Back. Vidal, look, Vidal don't want Vidal to do. He, but he boxed. He boxed his way to a win. You know what Mikhail Lowell has, and Mikhail Lowell has a lot of power, but mm. he couldn't get off. Vidal just boxed him very, very comfortably. Uh, but the, the real talking point, and the, probably the most exciting part of the whole fight, was what happened after. If I'm being brutally honest. Um, well, the cameras panned off it as soon as Chef Clark rocked up. The the, the cameras disappeared and went over to the the commentary uh, commentary booth. So. I don't know. I don't know what you can tell me what happened when Chef Clock rocked up, if anything happened, because it looked like there's a little scuffle between the teams. Um, but isn't Chef Clock mandatory for Bidal Riley? Yeah, Chef's mandatory. Yeah. So, so I right, think Chef was just going there to say, like, like you don't like okay, you try and make if you're trying to make this fight and trying to kind of create this narrative between Isaac Chamberlain and Vidal Riley, don't forget about me, because I'm the actual one who's mandatory mm. for this title. Which and I, I think it got very much blown out of proportion what happened. And I don't think it was as bad. I don't think it was that bad that Sky should have turned the cameras off, if I'm being perfectly honest. I didn't see it, but from what I've spoke to people who were there, 
in the middle of it, and they said it it weren't it weren't bad at all, really. Um, it was more of a misunderstanding than anything. Because if you could actually hear before they cut it off, um, both Vidal and Isaac were saying like, "Let him in, bring him in." Mm. So I think it was more to do with the people surrounding them that rather than the actual free fighters. Mm. Well, listen, listen, that's we we so love... I, I, as well. I was at an event with. Sorry, no, I was just going to say we love the storyline. We I love the. Oh, mate, sorry. That... No, I'm just saying I love the fact that we've got that storyline now. We've got three very, very good British fighters in Vidal Riley, Isaac Chamberlain, and Chev Clark. There or thereabouts. And I think, like I said to you, we keep getting these British title fights, English title fights. If they can get it on, whoever it may be, I think we're in for a good fight. I think Isaac Chamberlain puts a little bit more pressure than Mikhail Lawal. He might be able to cut the ring off more than Mikhail Lawal against Vidal Riley. You know what I mean? Vidal, uh, Mikhail Lawal was sort of following Vidal Riley around the ring. But I think Isaac Chamberlain's got the skill set to step aside and cut him off a little bit and go to the work in the body. Do you know what I mean? So that'll make the fight a little bit more entertaining with Vidal Riley. But then you've got Chef Clark, who is a, I'm, I'm a fan of. I think that he's he's definitely going to be a great, 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 great fighter. Um, sprinkle him in there as well. Him against Isaac Chamberlain, him against Vidal Riley. I mean, what an absolute... If they... One of them two get it on, I'm happy. I think that's going to be an absolutely great fight and we're going to be destined for another great British-English title fight with either three of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, great. Like, they're, they're kind of that, that wave of cruiserweights because we have so many cruiserweights. We have, like, so, so many. So, I know I've changed in... I don't know what, what's going to happen because I thought Isaac Chamberlain was going to fight for the European. If I'm being honest, so I thought he might have vacated. So, but and I think if he don't get the Vidal fight, if Vidal's forced to fight, um, so no, sorry, if he's forced to fight Chev, maybe he vacates. I don't know what's going to happen. There's yeah. there's a lot of variables of this, and it'll be interesting to see it play out. Definitely, I uh, I just agree. I love I love Sunday night fight cards because. We had the good good football at the weekend. We had Liverpool game against uh, Brighton. Then we had City against Arsenal. And then straight onto the box on a Sunday. I mean, what more can you ask for on a Sunday? I think Sunday fight night should become more of a thing. Not all the time, because people like to have a drink at fight nights and like, they want to get up on a Monday morning. Mm. But if it's a bank holiday Monday, then yeah. why not? Why not, have a, why, not have a, why not have a Sunday night fight night? I think that was a, an absolutely great shout and a great way to do it. Um. That was like I said, the great week in the box, and we'll just go stateside quickly, Joe, and talk about Tim Zhu against Sebastian Fondura. Uh, upset. I don't think many people would have thought that Sebastian Fondura would have got beat Tim Zhu. Uh, but again, talking about having heart and having a character going to the well. I mean, he got an elbow to the head in the third or fourth round, was it? Tim Zhu. I think he was the full. fourth. Fourth round, think... and then got a massive cut. Corner could have pulled him out because it was an illegal, illegal elbow. Could have pulled him out and said, "Listen, that was legal elbow. Call the fight off." Da, da, da. But he wanted to fight on. He fought on and fought on. Ten days notice against a six foot six southpaw when he was meant to be fighting a five foot eight orthodox guy. You, you know what I mean? You just went. You just went off complete one eighty. You've been training for months and months for this guy Keith Thurman, who's five foot eight, an orthodox fighter, and then and within ten days notice to keep the card alive, you've done a one eighty. I went to a six foot six southpaw. I mean, not many fighters will mm. do that, but Tim Zhu is that fighter. Yeah, I love Tim Zhu. I was gutted for him that he uh, that, that he lost, but fair play, fair play from Dura. Like, comes in a short notice and done what he had to do. Um, like, he, fair play, he's changed his life, and now I'm seeing that he might be fighting Terence Crawford. So, <laughs> in the space of what three weeks. Three, you've you've literally turned your life around. Yeah, and then he, got, he had that knockout, didn't he? he? Got knocked out by was it Mendoza? I think Mendoza knocked him out um, last year as well. So he's gone from like a a devastating knockout loss to becoming a two a two uh, a unified world champion to then maybe going on to fight maybe the pound for pound king number one dog in the whole of boxing in Terence Crawford. I mean that is just boxing for you. One day you can be down and out. Then the next day, an opportunity comes. Um, and that's probably testament to... Well, I know Sebastian had a fight, but I think boxing is only a short career. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. If you give boxing 15 years of your life where you're in the sport, 
you train every day, you're in the gym, you're never out. Opportunities can come up. And if you take that opportunity and it pays off, then that's it, your life's made. Do you know what I mean? So I, for every young fighter, if I can give you any advice, this is probably it. And my fucking advice is probably worth two pence right now, so nobody probably gives a shit. But if you're a boxer and you want to make a career out of it, it's only 15 years maximum of your life. Give it 110%, stay in the gym, stay ready, opportunities will come, you take them. You could be that two uh, unified world champion. You could be facing the pound for pound number one like Terence Crawford. Who knows? That's why we love the sport, Joe. Do you know what I mean? You just don't know what what will happen. And we saw that in Tim Zhu and Fundura, Clark and Wardley. It's just a great sport. That's why we love it, mate. Yeah, 100%. And look, if he, didn't, if he hadn't taken that opportunity, in years to come, he might have been thinking, what if, if he never got an opportunity again? So you've got to take the opportunities when you can when you can come. And then, 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 look, just fair play to him. And it, it, just a great week of boxing all round. Yeah. Absolutely great week of boxing. And then, then this week, we've got Hitchens versus Lemos. Is that right? With Pacheco on yeah. the undercard. You've got Diego Brian Pacheco. and Brian for the world title. Him and Callum Simpson would be a good fight. Diego Pacheco. Diego, great Diego, fight. Great yeah, fight. That, that's a good super middleweight fight. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Uh, yeah, great week to look forward to. Um, April, we've got Gil and Barrett coming up. We've got, yep. I was going to say Josh Taylor Carroll, but we haven't, that's not until the 25th of May. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there will be news and the 5v5 is yet to be announced. I'm sure it will be announced in the next couple of weeks. Um, we know 15th the 15th of April, I 15th. think that got announced. I think that got announced, yep. All right, good. Then 15th of April, we find out who's fighting, which is going to be exciting, so that will keep us busy in another talking point. But like I say, Joe, as you can tell by my window, you can see the rain splatter, so Glasgow, it always rains up in Scotland, mate. Always nice and rains. sunny down here, mate. It's nice and sunny. Yeah, I'm actually 21 years old, man. This is just a weather-beaten face. <laughs> yeah, weathered, yeah. <laughs> All punched it. in the face too much. <laughs> that's it mate oh, don't get punched anymore I've just got a wee bit of a bent nose you know what I mean anyway mate listen well done again these past three weeks I know you've had back to back to back shows well done mate and like I said I'll see you next week always enjoy your time Joe but now yeah see you next week, week mate and uh, yeah I'll catch you soon mate see Thank you later bye 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 Wall Street Memes Casino I'm fine and Sportsbook